Before you invest into crypto, it's important that you do all your research. That is why, as an investor, you need to understand the different types of crypto supplies so that you can understand a coin's value. So in this video, we're going to talk about three different types of supply, namely circulating supply, total supply, and maximum supply. So let's get into it and let's talk about circulating supply. As the name suggests, circulating supply basically means that it's the coins that are circulating in the crypto ecosystem currently. So obviously this number can increase or decrease and a way that it might decrease is when there's something called a coin burn event where basically these coins are burnt and obviously when coins are burnt it means that they're no longer there which means that the supply decreases so that means that the circulating supply will decrease. And circulating supply is very important when we want to calculate our market cap because market cap equals share price times circulating supply. So that, let me give you an example to illustrate this. So let's use a random coin and let's call it YouTube coin, right? So YouTube coin, let's say that it has a circulating supply of 1 million tokens and its share price or whatever current price is $1. So the way we would calculate market cap is we'd say market cap equals $1, which is the price times my million coins. So my market cap would be $1 million. So basically just to add on to this idea of circulating supply, it's basically all the coins that are in the ecosystem moving around, exchanging between different people, etc., etc. Now let's move on to total supply. So total supply is basically the circulating supply plus those tokens that are hidden, tokens that are that were created and they were mined, but they weren't maybe released to the public. Maybe there's a coin and maybe there's some investors or founders who first got into it and they were given coins before anyone else had. So the total supply equals the circulating supply that is all the coins that we have access to as individual retailers, as well as those tokens that are hidden and they were obviously created in mind, but they're not available to us currently. So what you've got to realize is that the total, some of the value of the total supply can then end up going into the circulating supply because maybe one of the founders who have coins, they might go and put it into an exchange. Suddenly now that's going to change our circulating supply because maybe our circulating supply was 1 million, but then one of the founders goes and releases 50,000 tokens onto the market. Now our circulating supply is that million plus those 50,000. So what you need to be careful of is you need to notice that a circulating supply can increase through a massive influx of these coins coming in from the total supply, coming in from these founders. Before we move on to maximum supply, one important thing that now we know total supply and circulating supply is you need to look at both those figures. What is the total supply and what is the circulating supply? And if there's a huge difference between the two, that could be a potential red flag and you need to do your research to find out why exactly is the total supply and circulating supply very different. So now let's move on to maximum supply. So maximum supply, as the name suggests, is the maximum amount of coins that will ever be created. And also what you need to be aware of is some coins actually don't have a maximum supply. Bitcoin has a maximum supply of 21 million coins but something else might not even have a maximum supply, which means that coins can be continuously created. Now, the main point about maximum supply is that is actually the big one when you are looking to hold a coin for the long term, because the maximum supply gives you an idea of the potential value of a crypto's coin. Because if you notice maximum supply, it's going to end up coming into the market one day. Right now, maybe like for example, Bitcoin, there's 21 million Bitcoin. Maybe at the moment there isn't 21 million Bitcoin, but in I think 2126 or something like that, there will be 21 million Bitcoins released into the public. So it's key that you understand when you are investing in a crypto, you need to look at this maximum supply if they have it, because it gives you an idea of the potential value of that coin. Because remember, if you're holding something for the long term, chances are that that maximum supply will be reached while you're holding on long term. Obviously, as we're talking, you're not going to live until 21, 26. Okay, maybe some of you might. You might have some weird 
special health things, but most of us who are holding Bitcoin won't be here when the full 21 million Bitcoins are released. What you also need to look at and be wary of is the difference between the circulating supply and the maximum supply. Because if there's a huge difference between the circulating supply and the maximum supply, that could be a potential red flag. Because what that means is that your coins may be diluted in the future. Because if you think about it, let's say there's only a million coins, okay? And they're each worth a dollar. Well, remember the way things work is it's always demand and supply, right? So if we have the same level of demand for a coin, but the supply starts massively increasing, our price is probably gonna end up dropping. Because if we have the same demand, but an increase in supply, prices always drop. And the only way prices increase is if we reduce the supply and keep the demand, or if we have the same supply and we increase the demand. So the more tokens there are available, it means that it's gonna dilute the share price of our token. Maybe we had it at $10 and now suddenly it's dropped to $1 because there's so many coins and the demand's still the same. Obviously, if you're a short-term holder of these coins and you're just doing a little bit of day trading, then the maximum supply doesn't really matter to you. But obviously you should take into account and think about when are these coins gonna be released or look into it because maybe while you're day trading, maybe those coins might hit the market on that specific day that you trade and then now you lose your position. So you don't really have to worry as much as a long-term holder, but sometimes, you know, you gotta sort of know the news events of the crypto that you're trading. Overall, long-term holders need to really take into account and look at this maximum supply, circulating supply, total supply, because it's very important for our investing decisions so we can understand what is the potential value of a coin. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.